Thanks for joining us. Last week we were in Rioja, land of red soil, red squirrels and red wine. This week we go green as we head west to Padron to track down a pepper with a sneaky reputation. Galicia, the northwestern jewel of green Spain. Lush and verdant, this is a world away from the more recognisable arid Spanish plains we've come to know. And while an Australasian invasion of gum trees has transformed the wilderness to look kind of like that bit of the Pacific Highway near Karingai National Park, Galicia retains a truly Spanish flavour, especially when it comes to their obsession with paprika-coated octopus. But it's not the food that brings most on a pilgrimage to Galicia, it's, well, an actual pilgrimage. Thousands of Catholics flock from across Europe to walk the famous Camino de Santiago, which concludes in the town of Santiago de Compostela. Just half an hour south is Padron, a small town known locally as a hub for fresh produce. Padron is just a tiny dot on the Galician landscape, but it produces one of Europe's favourite bar snacks, the Padron pepper. These green chilies are beloved by many because of their fresh bitter tang and a semi-mythical promise that one in ten could be extra spicy, leading to their nickname, the Russian Roulette Pepper. Hot on its trail, we drove into the even tinier village of Erbon to trace the history of the famous Pimiento de Padron. A sparsely populated village with more vegetables than people, Erbon has plenty of evidence of its spicy history. Purely by chance, we discovered the actual monastery where the pepper was first grown, on the banks of a stunning river, and this fiery origin story was all but complete. I'm here in Erbon, a couple of minutes outside of Padron, and this is where the very first Padron peppers were ever cultivated. They were brought over by San Antonio from a little place in Mexico where they were native called Tabasco, which you've probably heard of if you have any interest in chilies whatsoever. You can just see them behind me here. They're uh, quite small and uh, they'll be coming into fruit in the next couple of weeks. The most popular way to consume the Padron pepper is super simple. A glug of hot olive oil, Fry it until the skin's blister, and a crack of sea salt. But as a self-confessed chili addict who's eaten hundreds, I didn't believe this hype about the 10% and having an extra kick. I popped into a pementeria in Ebon and bought a jar of their extra spicy pepper marmalade to face the heat. So here we have it, the super spicy pimento marmalada. Um, it's like a really spicy chili jam, apparently, so I'm going to give it a bit of a taste test and uh, see if it really lives up to its reputation. I'm going to use quite a bit because I am a bit of a chili freak, so I do like things spicy. Anyone who knows me knows that I put chili on pretty much everything, including my breakfast. So this better live up to its reputation. Here we go. Wow. Mm. Certainly much more spicy than the fresh Padron peppers. Um, it's got quite a quite a, a lovely green, kind of grassy, herbaceous uh, tone to it. But um, the spice doesn't linger, which is quite nice. It's uh, almost like um like mustard, for example. The spice doesn't doesn't just uh, hang around for a long time. It's very nice. We'll wash it down with. A drop of this Vadejo from Rueda, which is another Spanish wine region. Mm, very refreshing. So thanks again for joining us. Next week, please join us uh, again when we are in Porto, in Portugal, for an important report on port wine. And until then, remember, there's nothing quite as satisfying as eating local food. Cheers.